Hi everyone, Guy here. As you can probably hear, I've got a pretty nasty cold at the moment, so just a quick video this week. Now who doesn't love a mystery box? So earlier this month, this box from Games Workshop arrived in the mail, and I thought we could open it together and see what's inside. Now as far as I know, this could be one of three things. Option A, they finally sent me the starter paint set I mailed off for in August last year. Option B, they've sent me the missing part of my Titan's weapon that I let them know about in June. Option C, they've sent me something to apologise for accidentally demonetising my review of Warhammer Plus for its first two days. Maybe a box of chocolates or something. The only thing I've done so far is take the shipping label off. As much as I love and appreciate all Midwinter Minis viewers, I don't want you turning up for coffee all at once. Appropriate small box opening knife at the ready, here we go. Aha! We've got resin. So good news for Project Warlord Titan. The Sun Fury Plasma Annihilator has its final part. Let's get it cleaned up and attached. A little bit of a mold line on the cable, but no major issue. Scrape scrape, wash wash, scrub scrub, stick stick. Nice! The biggest gun in Warhammer 40k is complete. Not much prep left for the Midwinter Minis Warlord Titan now. Everything's trimmed and scraped. Time to get building, huh? So just to remind you of the timeline here, I made the video on this titanic weapon at the end of June. I contacted Forge World about the missing part on the 22nd of June, gave them all the info they needed, and was told on the 24th that it would be with me within 20 to 25 working days. On the 3rd of August, 28 working days after that email with no replacement part in sight, I emailed them to ask what the situation was, and they said that it had been sent, but returned back to them undelivered. I mean, I never saw anything, I didn't get a sorry we missed you card through the door, and I wasn't given any shipping confirmation or tracking info, so they said they'd cast up a new one and send it again. And that was resent to me on the 7th of September, 11 full weeks after I sent my email. I mean, not quite the level of customer service I would expect after buying the most expensive product a company makes, but here we are. The crazy thing is that while Forgewell took 77 days to fix their mistake, I had offers from viewers letting me know they'd be happy to help me 3D sculpt and print a part for me. One guy, Luke from the YouTube channel Luke's Way of Looking, actually did a mock-up of the part just referencing the assembly manual shown in the video. How awesome is that? Go check out Luke's channel, he posts pretty cool time-lapse videos of how he's designing his own custom orc army. So what about that starter paint set I sent off for? Am I not bitter about that? I wasted a fiver after all, huh? Well, to be honest, I did mail off the money, but I never really expected anything. I just thought it would be a funny thing to include in that retro paint set video. Along with the voucher and the five pounds I sent to Games Workshop, I also included a note saying that if they didn't have any of the paint sets left, they stopped making them 20 years ago after all, they should just use the money and have a drink on me in Bugman's bar. It was a pretty good excuse to make an Edgar Wright style rapid montage though. Also, before we go, just a quick update on that weird demonetized video situation. As I said, I put out a review video of Warhammer Plus at the start of this month, and within an hour of it going up it had been manually flagged with a copyright claim by someone acting on behalf of Games Workshop, and not only that, they chose to make it ineligible for monetization. That means that for the first two days the video was up, generally when videos receive their most views, I earned nothing from it. Which is a real shame, because this channel is what I do for a living and I've got two little babies and a dog that never seems to stop eating. Obviously the use of tiny clips in reviews is very protected by copyright law. I fought my case both on YouTube and directly with the Games Workshop infringement team, and ultimately they got back to me saying that it had been erroneously flagged. Now did the fact that there was a big uproar about it on Reddit and various Facebook groups help? I mean probably. Would it have been the same result if a newer channel with a smaller audience had been put in the same situation? To be honest, I doubt it. With that in mind, I've asked Games Workshop to compensate me for the lost revenue their self-confessed mistake cost me. When I averaged the revenue per thousand views of all days except the first two when it was demonetized, and then apply it to all the views, it suggests that I've lost out on just over £200. It's not going to break the bank, but it's still a significant amount of money to lose through no fault of my own. This kind of trigger-happy, ignorant use of YouTube's copyright claim system is pretty shady and sets a dangerous precedent, especially for smaller creators who don't have the safety net of Patreon supporters. I've politely let Games Workshop know that while I'd like this to be sorted out simply and amicably, I'd be happy to pursue the claim with legal action. Hopefully by demanding compensation from them, I'll deter them from being so flippant with copyright claims in the future. <laughs> Man, that got a bit serious, huh? Ooh, huge resin space gun, pew pew pew! And on the plus side, this box from Forgeworld is the perfect size to ship this prototype Terminator off to its eBay buyer. 
So far, that video has raised almost £1,500 for the men's mental health charity Calm, and you should go check it out if you haven't seen it already. I painted up the first ever 40k Terminator model while chatting to Bob Naismith, the visionary Citadel sculptor who actually designed it. I'll leave a link to that in the video description. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.